look, uh, mommy, 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 yes, mommy, look, at this way, we go for a hike this way. That's where we go for a hike? Yeah. Ooh, look, did you see the waterfall? One, two, three, flash You know what's crazy? For the last little while, just traveling through Alaska and, and seeing some incredibly wild, beautiful places, it's so humbling. You know, and I, I always, I find that I always say it, but every time you're brought into that situation of being again in like this little speck in the middle of Mother Earth, one with Mother Nature, just it humbles you and it makes you realize like how vast and beautiful and majestical this earth is. You know, being able to do a trip like this uh, and to bring Xavier with us has been such a blessing. Not only does he get to experience so much in such a short period of time, you know, 30 days is a long time to live in a van and drive around the wild. He gets to see whales and bears and bison highways and mountains and rivers and glaciers and so much. Like what an experience for a two and a half year old boy. <laughs> but also it's been super valuable because it's it's taken us even further into the world of having to learn to surrender. Yesterday, we went on this incredible boat ride and we saw humpback whales. And there was a moment, I remember, um, that they were swimming right, literally right next to us. One swam underneath our boat. And you, you stand there and you watch these creatures swim by you. And, and they were doing the, the breath out and they were doing these sounds like like speaking to each other and everything around them was just still I remember just being a witness of that and I felt this rush of emotion come over me like I wanted to cry because it just felt so I felt so lucky I felt so special to be just be able to witness that in that moment and it just reminded me that there is so much magic on this earth and there's so much beauty on this earth and you know when we when we don't give ourselves the opportunity to put ourselves in situation to witness it whether it is very dramatic like humpback whales or just sitting somewhere and noticing you know, the way the ant colony works you know and them working with each other like you can find magic in, in every little thing and that's actually something that Xavier has taught me a lot is he forces us to stop he forces us to look at the flower, to look at the ant, to look at the bee pollinating a flower and, and all of these things. And when you actually take a moment to pause and look at the, the wonder of how incredibly beautiful is this earth that we live on and how lucky are we to experience this time where we can witness this beauty and this magic and just be in awe of it. And it's very, very special. Do it. All right, so we are in Yukon, right near Destruction Bay on the Alaskan Highway. We have a little setup here. Hey, Xavier, how's it going? The man of very few words. Is that white doggy and black doggy? White doggy, black doggy. We can't in this bag. Ah. And here we have mommy cooking. We're gonna cook outside, so we've got all our stuff ready to put out there. Uh, we're making a tofu scramble with salad and tons of stir-fried veggies. Who's this guy? That's Bob. This is where we sleep, right here. This is our bed. This actually is Guapo's bed, technically. 
but it also converts into a little table with two seats. But today and for this trip, we've actually been using more as a couch because Guapo likes to hang out here when we drive. This is where he sleeps. Xavier plays on this, so it's kind of stayed as a couch for a while. Oh, we got a fridge in there. Spices, pots and pans. And this is normally where the seat is, right here. Yes, yeah, so if you pull this out, a little carpet. This is really dirty, but this is where actually the seat comes in. So when we drive, it's a two-seater. Xavier has his car seat in here, so he, that's where he sits. But these guys, on all our doors and windows, have been saving our ass from the biggest lesson of the entire trip. Yukon and Alaska mosquitoes. Out of control. You're just giving blood constantly, like a 24-hour blood donor. So they come open like that, and then they snap close. It's the simplest thing, but honestly, it's it's been the best thing that's ever happened to us on this entire trip. Except this thing keeps coming off. <laughs> Hello. Can you hear me? Well, this is the beginning of everything. We made it to Alaska. There is an imaginary line, a borderline that says, this is Canada, this is America, which is so silly because you're like, it's one land. Yet we are so divided in that way. And yet still all the same. <laughs> I need to touch it. <laughs> what do you have to declare? <laughs> Both are the same. <laughs> We are in North Pole, in Santa's house. There's Santa. There's his house. We're in the Santa's house. <laughs> Mommy, look at the balloon. See the red balloon and the blue balloon. Say hi, Grandma. Hi, Grandma. Imagine a little Costa Rican Saguatas on a journey to Alaska, seeing snow for the first time. It's pretty cool. <laughs> there they are. Snow for the first time. Say hi, Juliana. <laughs> please can have a snowball, please. I'd rather have you in my mind. No matter how <laughs> Some ice cream. You like ice cream, eh? No matter how I need to go So we pulled off the side of a road here outside of Fairbanks. That road. And look what we found. A little vegetarian cuisine. So good morning. Look at this incredibly blue, beautiful glacier lake. It's probably extremely cold. I'll go swimming in it. Yeah, well. <laughs> it's amazing. Alaska, where you can just pull off the highway. Literally. Anyway. Like, wow. Do you want to have a quick sex too? Oh. <laughs> Right. Just short and sweet. We decided this morning we come to the Alaskan Wildlife Conservation Center and we've been here for about 15 minutes outside of our van and then we came and made sandwiches and felt like terrible garbage um, in our souls and in our hearts. We're not much for zoos. We never support zoos. We think it's technically a prison for animals. Um, so when we saw the conservation component, we're like, that's amazing. We can bring Xavier somewhere that maybe he'll see an animal because we think it's a conservation area that there will be a little bit more 
you know, in the, maybe even if they're enclosed, but in a huge, large chunk of land that the animals can be free. Um, and the bottom line is, this is make it. no mistakes about it. This place is a fucking zoo, mm -hmm. and it might even be worse because you have like a pack of wolves in a tiny little enclosure. You have like a porcupine in a in a cage the size of our van, and then at the exit, they are selling reindeer hot dogs and bison burgers. And there's reindeer and bison. Right and there. nobody makes a connection. Baby, head popped off. Oh, there's a head! Um, you know, one of the biggest, biggest things and biggest worries I would say that I had starting this trip was how Xavier was going to do. Because, you know, Mark and I have done van life before. You know, it's easy. Like, it's van life. You just kind of go with the flow. But then as soon as you insert a toddler into the equation, you have no idea. He's never, you know, he's traveled a lot. He's a very well-traveled child, but never done you know four weeks in a van it's before rainy. and you know it's been it's been amazing i think he's done an amazing job at being able to cope with the constant change as free as it is and as sort of um as much as you feel like you know the map is your playground you still make a plan you still say okay, on this day, we're gonna try and do this, or tomorrow when we wake up, let's go try to do this, or, you know, by Thursday, we wanna make it here. And he, by honoring his need for um, downtime and balance and consistency and the things that toddlers need to keep them sane and not losing their shit, <laughs> um, he kind of calls the shots. <laughs> so we can make all the plans in the world on a trip like this. And, um, you know, and we bring all the toys to help keep him occupied. And, you know, Juliana gets back there and is constantly painting and drawing and doing all kinds of stuff. But the thing is, when he doesn't want to do something, he calls the shots. Any parents out there, if you need to occupy your children, do these things. There are moments when you're like, okay, we're going to get to this place today. It's six hours away, we got it. And then we wake up and Xavier is just not having a good day or he's tired and he just wants to play. He doesn't want to you know, be sitting in a car seat and we have to adjust. Whether that is we take a really long time to get to where we need to go, which we've done before, or we just reroute. It's the only way to bring a toddler on a trip like this, I think. It's just to recognize that his needs come first. And as long as you can recognize that, you can pull over at any time and find something fun to do. The other day we found a car wash. We were just like, well, we got to wash the car. We need something to engage him with and to burn some energy and to, to get him out of the van. So we were in, we were in Took, Alaska, and we are like, we bought two rounds of car wash because we wasted so much of it turning it into a splash park for him. Um, and that's, you know, that's, those are actually the moments that are more important and more memorable than, you know, sticking to the schedule. It's being spontaneous and um, coming together as a family to have as much fun and adventure as possible. And he's been so wonderful. And anytime we've actually tried to push past what he's capable of, he reminds us pretty freaking quickly, um, being a toddler, dealing with his emotions the way that he does. Um, so it's been pretty fun uh, and funny.
Other five. You, you, yum. Eagle, you, who's the top of something Marmot Meadows. <laughs> Is it your happy face? Like a bird on a tree I'm just sitting here I got time We have a visitor that forced us to take away it's our food very quickly. From up here The world seems Got a small. moose and a baby moose. We can sit together. It's Somehow we found a motocross track you in Anchorage. Oh, yeah, but it's flying. We're meant to be. They're flying. In the great outdoor land of the midnight sun. Forever free. DJ Zayn back there. DJ Zayn in the house. We're getting on a boat tomorrow to return. We're going to take a ferry all the way from Haines, Alaska, where we are right now, to um, Bellingham, Washington. And then we're like a two-hour drive from Vancouver Island, from our home base. And in the end, all of the highs and the lows of this trip, they've been so beautiful, and they've gifted us so much. It's been really special. It's been really, really, really special. I think this is my favorite trip of my entire life almost, with my son and my wife, who I love, creating these memories for the rest of time for us to cherish and hold. What better thing could we be doing? If there's anything from this trip I could say, it's just go out and do the thing that you've said you've wanted to do for a while, but have never found the time. Just find the time, because we don't know how much time we have. It's so, so, so important to seize the moments when you can. The moments of love, the moments of heart, the moments of family and the moments that you turn into memories that are more important than anything else because time equals memories if you spend it right and those memories are priceless Tomorrow, I'm gonna run away. 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 I'm